Hello friends, in today's session I will be talking briefly about the test fixator for distal humerus. In my previous video, I had shown you the technique for fixation of proximal tibia fractures with test fixator. The basic principles remain same, only the pattern of wires that need to be placed for distal humerus changes. So first thing you need to do is to go for open reduction. Like in any articular fracture in which we are able to visualize the joint, we go for open reduction. Here also in distal humerus, we have to go for open reduction and then secure that reduction with the help of multiple K wires. In cases when you are not able to visualize the joint properly, you can go for olecanon osteotomy also and then reduce the joint properly as you do in conventional distal humerus plate fixation. So once you have reduced the articular block, then you have to pass one or two thick transcondylar wires. The wires need to be parallel to the joint or you can say orthogonal or 90 degree to the axis of humerus diaphysis. The thick wire means it should be around 2 mm or 2.5 mm in diameter. Then what you need to do, you have to align that articular block with the diaphysis or the metaphysal region which is the part of the proximal fragment. Then you have to pass two crossed K wires from the lateral condyle and medial condyle and they have to exit from the proximal fragment on the opposite side. And be aware wherever you are passing the wires, you have to pass the wires through the skin cover. That means you have to pull the skin first, then see what is the normal position of skin over the condyle, then you have to pass the wire. On the medial side, just be careful that the wires entering through the medial epicondyle should stay anterior to the ulnar nerve because normally the ulnar nerve lies posterior to the medial epicondyle. So you don't want to disturb that relation. Therefore, you have to pass the wires while detecting the nerve posteriorly, then through the medial epicondyle under direct vision. Also, you need to be careful that the wires should not pass through the olecranon fossa. Otherwise, after placement of fixator, the elbow extension is going to get compromised. So once that is done, you have to bend the terminal wire, the wire which was here, it has to be bent in line with the axis of the other transcondylar wires like this. So once that is done, then you are ready with your metaphysal block. Now you have to create a diaphysial assembly. Now again, be careful, you have to pass the wires through the skin cover, then enter into the diaphysis. And here you have to be careful, you have to avoid any injury to the ulnar nerve and radial nerve. It won't be problematic because everything will be done under direct vision. The radial nerve would have already entered into the anterior compartment and it won't be visible posteriorly in the lower part you have to lift the skin cover then pass the wire directly under direct vision then enter the diaphysis and on the ulnar side or you can say medial side also you have to be careful to retract the ulnar nerve anteriorly while passing the wire then make them exit through the skin cover so once that is done you are ready with your diaphysial and metaphysial assembly now what you need to do you have to pass clamps on each of the exiting side of the wires I've told you in earlier video, there are small clamps which have hole for the wire and a hole for the rod. Once you have passed the clamp, then what you can do, you can either pass a single rod through hole of this assembly on each side while keeping the wires tensioned. I've told you in earlier video, then for tensioning these wires, you have to go for pre-bending. That means you have to either diverse the wires like this, then tighten the clamp, or you can converse the wires like this, then tighten the clamp. You can go in either way because both of these steps are going to contribute to the tensioning of the wires. So better would be to create a stable assembly of the diaphysis and metaphysis separately using small rods. So you can pass the small rods on each side and then connect these two assemblies with the help of a larger rod like this. So this assembly is already tensioned and you have tensioned this assembly also. By the way, I've told you, you can either converge or diverge the wire ends, then tighten the clamp. So both of these assemblies are now tensioned. Now when you are tightening the clamps over the large rod, then also you can make them tension. So if your fracture is slightly distracted, what you can do, you can converge these two assemblies, then tighten the clamp on each side. So ultimately your whole of the construct is now tensioned in compression. That will actually contribute to the stability and also healing of the fracture. So the jazz fixator is not routinely used for fixation of distal humerus fractures. It is helpful when the surgery is going to be delayed because of the open fractures and sometimes pre-existing infection. You can actually put antibiotic beads while implant has not been placed. You can put the jazz fixator and the advantage is that if the definitive fixation is going to be very much delayed, then the fracture can actually heal in jazz assembly. Like in this picture you have seen, we have actually pre-bent these wires so that they are now tensioned and then connected the rod. So you see the healing has already started. There is bridging callus formation and the articular part is well supported as well. So ultimately this will help in healing also. And the good thing is that, that the patient can start early range of motion on the fixator. So if the definitive surgery is going to be delayed, it will not hinder the patient's post-op rehabilitation. Otherwise, if the surgery is delayed without any kind of fixation, then definitely the patient will end up in post-operative stiffness. But with the help of chest fixator, you can actually prevent. This was the follow-up x-ray of that patient in which the chest fixator was applied as the definitive measure and he can be seen with bridging bone formation. So this video was just for the technique purpose of the jazz fixator. If you have any queries, you can just put those in comments. Thank you.